an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents a voice of truth and inspiration, broadcasting on frequencies of love, laughter, and information, illuminating new paths for new directions as we, as one, strive for higher and higher planes of existence and a better understanding of ourselves and the world in which we live. Always remembering, Life Changes. This is radio like you've never felt before. This is Life Changes with Filippo. And now your host... Our MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Ciao, everyone. Happy Chinese New Year. You know, I keep saying I'm excited about this show, but 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 I am excited about the show. This is the Chinese New Year, like today, like right now as we're doing the show. It is the year of the dragon, the most powerful uh, uh, zodiacal zodiacal. Zodiacal? I I don't know. Uh, Zodiac. Anyway, it's a very powerful thing. (laughs) Very powerful animal. Um, And the most powerful of the the Chinese horoscope. Horoscopal. Um, Anyway, and uh, it also is a new moon, which means uh, to those who believe it, it's uh, the time you draw things to yourself that you want uh, this very night. So, and tonight... We have uh, Mike uh, Marino with us. He's not only a friend, but a funny guy who's done a lot, a lot of things. I was, I, I know him, and I, I'm always impressed with the things that I that I learn more about that he does. And then tonight, I was reading his bio again. And I thought, wow, he did that too. I saw that. Oh, that's right, he was in that, and that's exciting. And we also have Mark Leisure with us today as um, our producer, of course, who will be doing our producer's wrap at the end of the show. So uh, now can you see why I'm so excited about the show? And 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 tonight is really special. Actually, for those of you who have been following and who, who heard last week's show, I said that I was going to New York to win a contest and uh, a, a, a song contest. And I'd love, I'd love to talk about that experience. Um, but uh, something happened while I was in New York that that kind of is like what we started to talk about last week when I when we were talking about what would Filippo say? All right, well, what would Filippo say? I, I mean, it was a really good question that came to my mind, uh, and I kind of saw myself in the third person as I was with some people in New York that I hadn't been in uh, been with in a long time, and. They live so differently from the way I live in California with my friends and family and the way we talk and the way we think and the way we treat each other. And and they're beautiful people and I love them and so much of what they do is so cool and, and I want to do like them. And and some things I, I can't believe that, that people are still doing um, or that I used to do and some things I still do. And so... A situation happened that made me think, what what would Filippo say? What could Filippo say? What could I say in this moment to try and make this really awkward, really uncomfortable, and really hurtful situation better? Um, and I was stumped for a while. And then I ended up saying something about an hour later. But this is the situation, and I'm sure this has happened in your family. It certainly has happened in mine. But I had the pleasure of being in New York this weekend for the very first snowfall of the year. As a matter of fact, the very first snowfall of the whole freaking season. Uh, it, 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 there was a snow flurry in New York in October, which was a fluke. And, and that's it. No snow, no snow, which is news in itself and is a cause enough for worry. But regardless of that, uh, thankfully the night I arrived, uh, I was already there, landed safe, and then in the middle of the night, there was snow. And I actually got, uh, was still awake in the middle of the night and looked out the window and watched it snow and thought, wow, that's really cool. And then in the morning when there were a few inches of snow on the ground, I thought, oh, wow, how are we going to get out of the driveway and get to the the competition and all of that? So, you know, reality kind of set in. But anyway... Uh, the next day, I ended up spending some time with some family that I haven't seen in a while. And I'm sitting next to um, a distant relative who is is older and whose health is failing, who can't even hardly hear with a hearing aid on. 
Um, and it, it was it was kind of sad to see him that way. And the next thing I know, um, this beautiful young lady who who is a distant cousin, who is adorable and sweet and loving and all that, and 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 a, and a bright twenty four year old comes in the house and starts screaming at the top of her lungs. Did you touch my core? Did you touch my core? Huh? Did you touch my core? How many times do I have to tell you, don't touch my core? Don't touch my core. How hard is it not to touch my core? I don't understand. I tell you not to touch my core. And my accent isn't as great as hers was. I loved it. It was, it, it, if it wasn't, so, if he wasn't in such a bad condition, I would have laughed because it would have, it was so funny. And she was so adamant about this. And I, um, I watched her and I turned away and because I just, I was uncomfortable, frankly, um, as she did this in front of somebody she hasn't seen in years. <sighs> and she said, basically, I don't understand how hard it is not to touch my car when I ask you not to touch my car. That's all. And he said, all I did was brush the top layer of snow off your windshield because it was ice and it would have been harder for you to get it off. And she said, I don't care. I tell you not to touch my car. What do I have to do to not have you do it? So I got up when she left and walked out of the room. Um, and I And her mom followed me. And so her mom said to me, She's a great kid, but every once in a while she goes into that and you can't stop her. And on the one hand, I wanted to say, you know what? It's not that hard. Just don't touch her car. Whatever the deal is, don't touch it. And so I said, what is the deal with her car? And her mom said, well, it's a $45,000 car. She bought it on her own and it's brand new and she's paying for it herself. Of course, she's paying for it herself because she gets to live at home. Um, and her parents are paying for everything else, but, but okay, okay, still. And I said, so why does he touch it? And she says, you know, he's trying to help. And then I thought of something. I thought, how hard is it? It's a good question. How hard is it not to touch my car? And I thought about this, you know, this is her father, who obviously is failing very quickly in health, and who might be looking at his mortality and who might be thinking he might not be around for very long. And he might be thinking that this little girl that he used to hold in his arms and that he used to do everything for no longer needs her, no longer needs him. And that there's nothing he can do for her anymore, especially with his failing age and, and health. And so how hard is it for him not to touch her car? Probably pretty hard because he probably still has that desire to do something for his little girl. Or he might look at his girl all grown up and he might think, wow, I didn't do enough for her. I never was around for her. I always worked while she was growing up. I never held her. She, uh, she was, uh, and now she doesn't need me and I don't have a relationship with her. The least I could do is brush off this snow off of her car. Now, with her youth and vitality and beauty and the money that she's making now, she might not understand that. But it's a good question. How hard is it not to touch my car? It actually might be pretty hard. Um, so then I thought about him and I thought, you know, he, he comes from a, another world. He came from Italy. He, he never had stuff like that. Um, and he never had uh, an understanding of, of having your own thing. They shared everything they ever had and they didn't have much. And so now somebody in the family has a nice car. You kind of all chip in to, to, to keep it nice. And so he might never understand why she doesn't want him to touch her car and why it's just her car. So um, to her credit, she says he's rough with the cars and she sees what he does on the other cars. And yeah, you wouldn't want a chance scratching it. But 
what would Filippo say? You know, actually, I thought what she could have done is it wouldn't have been interesting if she walked in and said, hey, Dad, I really appreciate you trying to help. Um, but really, I, I want to do it myself. And I love you and I thank you. And if you ever do it again, you won't have to wait to die. I'll just kill you right now. No, I, I mean, but to say, but to say all of that at the beginning, um, and 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 then have him still argue back, maybe, but just you know, just say, thanks for not doing it again, and then catch him not doing it someday, and say, thanks for not having done it. I really liked doing it myself, or something like that. I'm going to be thinking more about this, and I hope you will too, actually, because though. In that part of the world and in that culture, um, the Italian Americans in New York, and they do think differently, but some of the ways they think doesn't necessarily make for a better life for themselves. I'm not saying they need to think like us Californians or like us new age quote unquote thinkers or whatever you want to call us. I'm just saying that there's a, a more elegant way of thinking, a more elegant way of being that would really actually make their lives that much simpler snow notwithstanding. So with that, we're going to talk to a man who's Italian-American and from that part of the country and somehow has taken all that and made it really funny. Right after this, we'll be back with Mike Marino. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. An ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook, and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. We're back. Did you touch my core? Did you touch my core? I know what Filippo would say now. I want to know what Mike would say. I think Mike would say, Vinny, get the bat. We're, our guest today is Mike Marino. That's who I'm talking about. Uh, you know, he has done so much, and I want to tell you so much about what he's done. Uh, let me just start a little bit about what, we, what I've got here for him. He's affectionately known to thousands of his fans. Actually, it's more like millions now, especially after the YouTube hits that he's gotten on some of his, on some of his clips. But anyways, he's affectionately known um, as New Jersey's bad boy. And uh, he's one of the most unique comics of our time. And he is. Uh, He has played in every major comedy club from New York to Los Angeles, including the MGM Grand, Catch a Rising Star, The Comic Strip, uh, Stand Up New York, The Improv, Rascals, The Ice House, on and on and on and on and on. Um, He has worked with some of the biggest names in Hollywood and headlined at both uh, the world famous Laugh Factory and the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, in in, uh, in Hollywood. Well, Los Angeles, Hollywood. He has been on TV. This always cracks me up because I forget he's done. As the World Turns, One Life to Live, Becker, Nikki, Frazier, Party of Five, and on and on. And then he's been in the movies. He's got uh, several film credits, including inclu- including Crooks, Pizza with Bullets, Hanging in Hito, and Steve King, uh, Stephen King's uh, Lucky Quarter. Uh, on TV, he's also had guest appearances regularly on The Tonight Show as a regular sketch player. I'm sure you remember him from that. Also, the Martin Short Show, uh, Comics Unleashed, the Boomer Show, Wild Pitch, Handheld Comedy Radio. Again, uh, on and on and on and on. So, um, and then he uh, headlines uh, uh, Just for Laughs Comedy Festival, the famous Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal, Canada, every year, and has headlined several USO comedy tours. I know that's not enough because there's so much more, but I can't wait to bring him on. Mike Marino, welcome to the show. 
Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm great. It's great to have you on. And uh, you were just in uh, in L.A. on Friday. You were in Florida performing this weekend, and now you're in N- N- Jersey, is it? New Jersey, yeah. Jeez. I actually Jeez. was doing a show in California, and then I had an event to do in Florida. Then I figured I'd pop into New Jersey and see my mom and dad. <laughs> and see the snow. Yeah. Actually, I came just in time to see the snow. I went from 80 degrees in beautiful Coral Springs, Florida, and it's three inches on the ground here in New Jersey. <laughs> All right. Did you touch my car? Do you know anybody like that? No, yeah, but when you were saying it, I'm saying to myself, okay, he's got the accent down pretty good, but it sounds <laughs> a little bit more like Staten Island, New York, than New Jersey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in New Jersey, it would be a little bit more like, get off my car. <laughs> oh, get off my car. <laughs> I like yeah. that. <laughs> Either that or it would be like, what are you, crazy? <laughs> and what would Mike say? I would say, Vinny, get the bat. <laughs> right. I love that line. You know, um, you come, okay, I, I'm Italian-American, but here on the on the West Coast, we don't talk like that, and and we're not as passionate, and that's either good or bad. It just it just is. You come from that, and you made it funny. Let's talk about a little bit about where you come from. Right. Well, I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey, which is a tough neighborhood, but for the longest period of time, uh, most Italian immigrants were living there, and and uh, the whole neighborhood was Italian. Um, yeah. There was the only battle they ever had was what did they call it gravy or sauce, but uh, right. it was just tons and tons of Italians. Then they started to spread out and moved out to the suburbs. Now the suburbs where I grew up was a town called Scotch Plains, and once again, huge Italian community. I mean, if you walked out your door and you said, "Hey, Italian guy," everybody would come out. <laughs> And uh, uh, we even lived around the corner from a street that was actually called Cook Avenue. And I don't know if they named it because everybody was cooking or that was just <laughs> the name of the street. <laughs> okay, so so you grew up around some Italians. And um, was there any passion in, in the neighborhood, in the family? Are you kidding me? Everybody's so passionate about, let's say, what they say, what they do, what they do for a living, what they cook or who they're involved with, that uh, if you didn't see things their way, you probably <laughs> were going to get in a fight. Or what they my don't do, so or, what they're, my or what they're... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, or what they don't do, or what they're not even involved in, and what doesn't even pertain to them, right? That's right. They could be passionate about taking out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and you so can take that say? any which way you want. <laughs> All right, so, so, so what... How how did that have an effect on you? Well, naturally, in stand-up comedy, the truth is the funniest. And whatever you talk about when it comes to uh, about your family, you're going to make people laugh because they're going to identify with what you're talking about. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be Italian as long as it has something to do with real-life experiences. But because the Italian people are so passionate, if I was just to say, yeah, I grew up in an Italian family, we always ate in the basement, most people are going to crack up laughing because they're going to say, yeah, so did we. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you, you of course, uh, were not witness to anybody fighting or anybody arguing or anybody uh, having a little hard time. Well, as an Italian guy, I can't say the word witness or that I saw anything. <laughs> Usually I don't know anything. Okay. But if I had to tell you the truth, then yes. I think uh, we have fights just about every day. My mother's 83 years old now, and I think we fought this afternoon. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's yeah, and pretty all we funny. fought about was she wanted me to have lunch, and I'm trying to tell her I just got in from California. I'm fasting. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I'm fasting. Well, quite <laughs> honestly, tomorrow morning I'm going to get a colonoscopy, so I had to fast for 24 hours. Are you now, that might you... be funny. It might not be funny, but I really have to do this. Well, I can't believe you went for the butt joke. Well, it's not even a butt joke. This is serious. <laughs> I got better jokes than that. But the bottom <laughs> line is, try, try fasting in an Italian family. 
<laughs> All right, so I could see an argument happening there. Um, so, right. so I, I, I once uh, knew a comedian who's who said to me, "Filippo, we laugh so we don't cry." Um, and and you and I have talked about that before. Could you shed some light on that from a comedian's standpoint? Well, yeah, you know, uh, comedians are inspirational people, and we can be uplifting. Here's something that's happened to me. Recently, a guy wrote a book called Life Inside the Spaghetti Bowl. And he contacted me on the Internet, and he said that he was a big fan, and that he said my comedy got him through the loss of his mother. Mm. And that him and his mom would watch my DVDs, and that they all would get a laugh, but they knew that she was going to be passing away because she had cancer. Mm. But they were dealing with it through um, laughter and getting over it by watching my work. Well, I do that whole big joke about the Last Supper and how my mother's not going to cook anymore. I love well, that guy, one. I, yeah. Well, the guy identified uh, with that joke so well that he actually quoted me word for word in his book. And it actually says in the eyes of the comedian Mike Marino, the Last Supper would never really take place because your mother would complain, but she would definitely cook no matter what. <laughs> wow. Wow. You, you, you know, it's interesting because uh, you take some of, the, some of the things that people wouldn't joke about, uh, and especially Italian people, and you you joke about them, and it's so interesting to be in an Italian audience and watch people laugh and identify and say that that's me. That's I do that. Um, so you're right; it can be very healing. Right, and they also will turn to their their friends that they're with at a comedy show, and they'll point and say, "Oh yeah, your mother does that. Oh, your brother acts like that. Oh, that's right. When we went to the gym, I acted like that." And when you hit a nerve like that and you make the people identify with what you're saying, that's usually when you get the biggest laugh. Right, right. And, and you know, and you brought up a really good point. I remember doing, a, the, the first time this happened to me, I remember doing an Italian audience. And you and I have done shows together, and I know uh, people have come up and said stuff to you as well um, about this particular thing. Like, that happened in my family, and these people are not... Italian and, and you know they're either Hispanic or they're Chinese and the first time that happened I, I said are you Italian and I was joking but they said no it's the same thing it's same thing it, it, in other words it, 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 if it happens in a family it happens in mo a lot of families that's right and it doesn't matter whether you're from an Italian family or or you're from an Asian family everybody has family members that act certain ways that remind you of your own and so where, where does your, where, where does, uh, obviously you draw from your heritage. Um, is that mainly where you draw a lot of your comedy? Sure. A lot of people ask me, you know, because I do that thing with putting out a cigarette and acting like a wise guy. So they'll say, do you really smoke cigarettes or were you a smoker at one time? And I said, actually, I never smoked. I'm imitating my father. Mm. My father was the type of guy who couldn't make a point unless he took a big drag of a cigarette and then put it out with his foot, and then he would start talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know? and it, 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 hold on. If, if people want to see what, what Mike's talking about right now, you, uh, you, you can go to where uh, millions of others, or at least a million and something, others have seen him do this on YouTube. Um, Mike, we'll have to put the link up on our website uh, so that people could go to that YouTube clip about you and uh, Osama bin Laden, or not you and Osama hey, that would bin Laden. be great. You can watch it on my website, which is mikemarino.net, or that's you can right. watch it on YouTube. That's right, that's right. Actually, you can go straight to mikemarino.net, and that's M-A-R-I-N-O. Uh, .net. So, well, there again, you know, a lot of people, I, I know um, some people have said to you, uh, kind of tongue in cheek. How mu how come you make fun of the Italians? And your answer is, I, I really like. Do you, you do you remember what you said to me one time about this? I believe I might have said I'm not really making fun of Italians. And if you consider me making fun of Italians, well, then I'll take the word Italian out and say my family. Yeah, and that's my exactly. My family what does you said. act like that, so there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. 
that's exactly what you said. And and all of a sudden, when when we were having that conversation and you said that, and and when you shared it with other people, it's kind of like, no, we want you to keep Italian in there. Of course, yeah, because then they feel like they're leaving them out. <laughs> it's really funny. I did funny. a big concert once, and we were doing a fundraiser for an Italian organization, and they raised about a hundred thousand dollars. And the guy came over to me and he said, well, you know, I think what you're saying about the Italian people might be a little disrespectful. And I said, then give me back the money. And he goes, nah, you can keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the, the, the other thing along the same lines is that, um, you know, some of the stuff that you do, you know, uh, like we all disagree with. But the thing is, is that you disagree with it too in the sense that i one of the bits that i love the most that you do is is the one about hitting your kids now i was hit as a kid and i don't think kids should be hit i know you don't think kids should be hit and i and i hope most people if not all people think kids should not be hit but it's just funny to me and in a way healing it's just funny to think that somebody would say that well i don't know i mean we were spanked as kids i mean my mother would did all the spanking because my father would kill us. He was such a big guy. But my my mother was tough, too. And I think, you know, there is a saying, spare the rod, spoil the child, and I believe uh-huh. that. And mm. kids today get away with anything. You go to hit your kid today, they'll just call child care services. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, okay, so uh, I, I still think it's funny, though. I don't think... I don't think we should hit our kids, but uh, I, I, and that's the, that's the interesting thing is that I think, I, I think how something is said, or I think, you, you know, we could laugh at stuff and it, it, and it's healing. It heals me in a sense. And it's funny to me. And I enjoy the fact that someone's talking about hitting your kids. When I was hitting it, I didn't like it and it hurt. Um, but it's like, you know, yeah, that's funny. And all of a sudden it just kind of takes away from, you know, what what was going on with me as a child. Does it do that for you, come to think of it? Absolutely. In fact, here's something you need to hear. The guy who owns the Laugh Factory in Hollywood, California, is trying to change the name from comedians to doctors of the soul. Wow. He says that comedians have the power to heal through their comedy. So in essence, we're doctors because we can make you forget about your ailment at least for a little while. So there you go. I am now Dr. Marino. I am a doctor <laughs> of the soul. I've been practicing for 18 years. <laughs> we, we might uh, have to have him on the show. And I, I, I agree. And, you know, uh, you know back to uh, our heritage, but uh, growing up, the Italians, um, I've shared this on the show before, so real briefly, had uh, used to call the musician, like, long, long, long time ago, used to call a musician when they were sick because the music would heal them and the musician would play just for the person. And so in, in a very similar way, laughter, hello, is the best medicine. That saying doesn't just come out of thin air. You know, I was uh, doing a show last night in uh, Florida. It was about 600 people. The average age for this particular community was about 75 years old. And all the people would come up to me after the show and say, uh, we made them feel fantastic at least for an hour. Mm. You know, people were forgetting about their ailments. They were forgetting about the pills that they needed to take when they got home. And uh, they just enjoyed the night. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I, I think we're going to have to do more of this on on our show because uh, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I like it a lot, and I'm I'm glad you're you're uh, setting the stage here for for more of this. Uh, we're talking to Mike Marino. He's a comedian, funny guy. You can learn more about him by going to mikemarino.net. As a matter of fact, there you can also get uh, one of two or both of his DVDs. One is live from Los Angeles. The other live from Asbury Park. You can get both DVDs there. He's working on a new one that hopefully we'll talk about in a little bit here when we come back. He's got tour dates all over the country. Chances are he'll be at a city near you because this guy works a lot. So chances are you'll get to see him live. So if you go to MikeMarino.net, 
you can opt into his email list and he connects with his fans and sends them information and you could be one of them along with the many millions of others. So uh, we'll enjoy more of Mike Marino as soon as we come back. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jump start, an awakening, someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Mariel Hemingway, Giorgio Sukalos, Marcy Shymoff, and Shadow Stevens on our archive page at our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Remember, you can also connect with us via Twitter and Facebook and now in our own community at lifechangesnetwork.com where real people come together to share real life in real time. That's lifechangesnetwork.com. We're back. I'm Filippo, and our guest today is Mike Marino. He's a comedian, and he's known as New Jersey's bad boy. Although I have to say, he's actually a really good boy, and I don't know if he's like me saying that, but he's a good boy. Um, anyway, you, you, you know him from uh, all kinds of things, actually. Those of you who know his DVDs know him from that. You've seen him on all kinds of shows on television, from The Tonight Show, where he was a regular sketch player. Uh, he, uh, was, uh, he's appeared all over. If you go to comedy clubs, you saw him for sure. The MGM Grand, Catch a Rising Star, The Comic Strip. Stand Up New York, The Improv, Rascals, Ice House. Again, I can go on and on. And on TV, I, I, I love this. Besides the, the Tonight Show, uh, The Martin Short Show, Comics Unleashed, The Boomer Show, Wild Pitch, Handheld Comedy. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's great um, that, that he's just all over. And he loves this, and he, he knows what he's doing, and he knows how to make you laugh and feel good. That's Mike Marino, and um, if you want to learn more about him directly, of course, you could always go to our website, but you can go to his website directly at Mike Marino. That's M-A-R-I-N-O dot net. And there you can get his two DVDs. One is live from Los Angeles. The other is live from Ashbury Park. Uh, and, and Mike, um, one is on the East Coast, one is on the West Coast. Do those shows differ greatly? Yeah, you know what? I, uh, was, when I did the one live from Los Angeles, I really was bagging on L.A. I was making fun of <laughs> okay. California people. I was making fun of downtown. I was making fun of traffic, the situations out there. That's where I came up with the gangs for white people because I, I never even heard of Bloods and Crips until I got to California. And then the one that I did live from Asbury Park, of course, is where Bruce Springsteen and John Bon Jovi became famous. That's where they were all working out. And uh, I did the show there with, from, like, let's say, a comedy point of view instead of a music point of view. Okay, so uh, that, that you know, I've seen one of them. I, I saw the one from Asbury Park. You know, I haven't seen the one from Los Angeles, and I, I, better, get, I better get up to speed. And now, not only that, but you've got another one you're doing in Atlantic City in June at the uh, Borgata Casino. That that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, this one's going to be really, really over the top. I got a grant from a, uh, a production company in Los Angeles. We got a sponsor, and uh, the Borgata um, Casino in Atlantic City is just state-of-the-art. It's a 2,500 seat theater. We're going to fill it up with people. We're going to set up the cameras, and then we're going to let it rip. Yeah, uh, that, that, that should be in June. I'm hoping that's going to be a June date because that's when the summer starts, and that's when most of my fans come out and uh, start.
start gambling down on the Jersey Shore. Well, I know those of us who are on your uh, on your mailing list, and of course, you always send us your friends' uh, stuff. So, but um, for everybody else, they can get on your mailing list for that as well. Yeah, they can just go to my website and log on, or they can actually write to me right on my website. I'm Mike at MikeMarino.net. A lot of people write to me. I get really, really cool fan mail. And again, you know, with Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, I read everything that comes through. Yeah, and, and he's not kidding. And and you know what, actually, um, I, I, I did say, you know, he's known as the New Jersey's bad boy, and I don't want to blow his cover here, but... As a friend, I have to say he's he's a, he's a good boy. He's always doing fundraisers, and he I, I'm sorry, good boy sounds just so so bad, so Italian. Like you're such a good boy. A you're a good boy, Mike. I'm a, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> he, he's he's a gentleman. He's always doing a fundraiser, or he does things for friends, or and and he he's just like that. Um, and then the way he is with the fans, when we're, when we're doing, I'm used to getting a lot of attention actually when I'm doing the show, but it's really fun to do a show with Mike because I have to share the attention. And it's so funny because Mike's up there telling all these, these stories that, that are like, some of them are crude. And then you have these little old ladies in some of these shows come up and say, oh, you're so funny. Yep. Hey, remember we did the one show and I went up there, I did my routine and then you went up there, you were singing. But I don't remember exactly what the situation was, but I came back up on the stage and handed either you or somebody else some flowers. Yes. And it was a spur of the moment improv, but boy, did it do well. It brought down the house. Actually, it was a it was a, a one-two punch kind of thing because I think uh, I was singing with this girl and you came up and gave her flowers and then I ended up singing with this other lady and you came and gave her flowers and then I did something and you came and brought me like, I, like I complained, it's like, where's mine? Then you went out in the lobby and got the big plastic pot or something and That's you brought right. that up yes. on stage. <laughs> I, think and, what was, and you know, I don't know what the song was, but it seems like it was, you don't bring me flowers anymore. You don't bring me flowers, that's exactly right. And you know, the funny thing is is that to the people in the audience, they, they don't get to seek that kind of stuff uh, very often anymore that was the kind of stuff that Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra did and 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 it's impromptu it's, it's spontaneous and it also comes from the heart because you, you you weren't trying to step on my act you just took it up a whole other notch that means I'm just paying attention and we were doing Rat Pack style stuff and when the audience sees that two entertainers are having a good time and they enjoy each other they have more fun as well yeah actually I have to agree but I have to say the funniest bit that we ever did together actually i should say that you ever did uh, on me was when um i was actually going uh like it was it was several months ago i think like uh, september october we were doing a fundraiser and um i got up and shared the and i sang a few songs and i said this song i'm i'm flying out to new york in a month and i'm doing this just this song i'm flying out to do just this song and then i sang the second song and i said i'm flying out to new york in two months to do a competition and i'm gonna just sing this one song and so then you got up right after i was done you said i'm flying to new york tomorrow to do just one joke and this is the joke <laughs> that's right <laughs> I was a play on your words. Yeah. I'm going all the way to New York to do one joke. <laughs> it's so, unheard of. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, you know, one of the other lines that I really like that you say is, I'm not the only one. Come on, folks. I'm not the only one. Can we talk about right. that line? Because I think it's powerful. Well, you know, because sometimes when you say things that might be a little bit risque or off color and the people don't react right away, you can do a comeback by making a making them say, um, listen, I know I'm not the only one. And then they start laughing because they're like, yeah, you know what? He's right. We did it, too. Yeah, and that's why I do that. You, you get them to kind oh, like of... I'm the only one. And then they all start laughing. No, he's right. We did that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you get them to kind of fess up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then, you know, obviously the, the Vinny get the bad line. Where d Did that come from anything specifically? I just got to know. I never asked you that. When I was 16 years old and I first got my driver's license and my car, my father handed me a baseball bat and everybody in the neighborhood knew what that baseball bat was for. 
You kept it in the front seat of your car for protection. We used to oh, call God. it a walking tall stick. Wow. And, and, and the thing is, if a cop pulled you over, especially in our neighborhood, he knew why you had that baseball bat in your car. But you couldn't say it was for protection because that technically that's carrying a concealed weapon. So you had to say softball or baseball. I remember one cop said to me, he goes, what's with your baseball bat? I said, softball. He says, why is your baseball bat cut in half with a metal rod down the center? I said, I'm on the remedial team. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was kind of shocked there. At that. I just, I didn't know whether, wow, okay, you had a baseball but, bat. With so the... getting, yeah, but getting to get the bat, um, you know, in an Italian neighborhood, I think everybody had a son named Vinny. It was Vinny everywhere you went. You were either Vin, Vinny, or Vincent, and they were all up and down your neighborhood. <laughs> and they were usually the biggest of guys. So if we wanted to protect ourselves against anybody for any silly reason, you would use your bat. Or you would say, hey, Vinny, get the bat. And it wow. stuck. I wasn't labeled New Jersey's bad boy till I moved to California. In New Jersey, I was Mike Marino. I got to California. Everybody said, wow, you wise guys from New Jersey, you really got an edge. You're a real bad boy. I'm like, God, put it on my jacket. I was a bad boy. I, you, you know, that reminds me. That's There's another thing you do. You, you actually, I, I'm sure people don't know this, actually, but, but you... you put on events where you bring some of your famous friends and you have a lot of them, you bring them together with people that are just getting started in the business and you, you network and you try and help people out. And it's just like, and I remember one time when I asked you, cause it was a lot of work and I said, Mike, why are you doing this? And you said, because was it because nobody helped you or because no, somebody helped you? Now I don't remember what, what the answer was. Well, in any event, whatever it was, we have to help each other, especially yeah. in show business. I mean, 99% of the business doesn't even work, and the, the percentage that does, they're all friends, and they're all in network, and they all work for each other up in Hollywood. So we got to open up the doors to uh, people who want to work or could help us move forward, especially like when we work together as a musician and a comedian. It, it just works. Uh, absolutely actually and and i like what you said earlier about the the healing aspect of comedy and and i was talking about the healing aspect of music and what a, what a great combination so um and as you know i'm working on something for long island so i'm hoping uh we'll be able to do something out there together um you know with um with some of the things you got coming up actually before i forget um our I might see you, or will I see you this Thursday? Are you going to be back in LA because you're doing the opening of uh, of a business that you're part of, right? Right. Uh, Andromeda Studios in Van Nuys has a grand opening Thursday and Friday night. You're going to have a big party from eight to two o'clock in the morning, and of course, you're more than welcome to come down there, come with some friends. Uh, I am on the board of directors of this production company. We're going to be making television shows and uh, we got two movies slated for the new year and uh, I'm actually not going to be there because I'm on tour but I did invite you and you can go with your friends and uh, there's going to be a lot of industry people so once again I'm throwing people together in a mingling type way and uh, hopefully something fantastic will come from the company I'm sure it will well, excellent, excellent, and and um, and then can we talk? I know because you've got some pilots that you're doing, and you had a pilot of your own called was it what was it Marinos or something? Yeah, we did the pilot Marinos, but it didn't get picked up. But luckily enough, now another company likes what I do on stage, so they just wrote a sitcom called Hey Jersey, which I'll be playing myself, and uh, hopefully we're going to start shooting that by uh, March. And uh, I got another pilot that we're going to do. Believe it or not, this guy wanted to do a cooking show. And I told him, if he wants to do a cooking show, he should call you, Philippe Ovaltaz. <laughs> if he wants to do a comedy show, then he could call me. So we're still working out the kinks and see how we're going to do it. No, actually, I think you'd be good cooking. I could just see you stirring the gravy with the bat. Yeah, right? That's funny. I never thought of that. 
I could use the bat that my father gave me when I was 16. It's still got the metal rod down the center. <laughs> there you go. That's the that's that's the poster. <laughs> Cooking in the basement with Mike Marino. If you don't get out of here, you'll eat good. <laughs> All right. So there, you heard it here first, folks. Mike is actually going to do a cooking show, and it's and it's going to be great. Actually, you've already technically. Um, done a couple cooking shows. You were on my cooking show on stage live at the Jimmy Kimmel stage. Um, That's right. Uh, right at San Gennaro. Correct. And, well, I was uh, and that, cooking that was, down there for quite some time until I, I just couldn't take the heat in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, so, so uh, nowadays, um, basically, you're just working a lot. You answer a lot of your fan mail. I, I mean, are, are you are you having a good time? Can we say that? Yes, I'm really enjoying my life. I'm happy all the time. I even tell people in my act, don't be in a bad mood. It just gives you a bad stomach ache. If you want to do something fun, find places like Walmart, watch the other people shop, and let me know how funny you think that is. Uh, you know, actually, that's actually really good advice. That's really yeah. good advice. And actually, I know that you've been through a lot of stuff. And I know, especially in this business, you, um, you, you like, like many others, have you know been dumped on or, or, or whatever, or, and, and passed when shouldn't have been. And, and somehow you've, you've continued to, to, to make funny. And um, so it, it evidently has helped you, but it's helped a lot of people. Um, and I hope you continue to do funny for a long time to come. Me too. I want to laugh until I can't laugh no more. <laughs> well, Mike, unless you have some funny words of wisdom that you want to share with us before we leave, we're coming close to the end of our segment. Well, as a doctor of the soul, I would just like to tell you and all your listeners Laugh every day, because if you don't, it really wasn't worth you getting angry over, whatever it was. Mm. And, and, and you also say something about if you don't laugh, it makes gas or something? Yeah, but I didn't know if I could do that on the show, but I will tell you <laughs> I that. that's where you and were I know going. that first rate. If you don't <laughs> laugh, it gives you gas, you fart, and you kill everybody in your neighborhood. Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Mike Marino, folks. Mike, that's a perfect way to end. Thank you so much. If you want to learn more about Mike Marino, you can go directly to his website at mikemarino.net. That's M A R I N O.net. Ciao, Mike. We'll see you real soon. Ciao, grazie. A prego, prego. Ciao, ciao, ciao. We'll be right back right after this. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook and at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, we're back, and we have been, have been playing with our guest, Mike Marino, and having a lot of fun. Uh, and now we're at the Producers Rack, where I have the pleasure of reintroducing our producer, Mark Lejeur. And I'm going to do one rap and one rap only. <laughs> that was funny, actually. And it's funny when things like that, uh, when people can do things like that in the moment, make funny of something that was just otherwise a fact or just a story. I think that's what's so brilliant uh, about Mike and, and so many comedians is their ability to take real and make real funny and make it real funny, actually. Um, you know, it, it, it's the, the people that get offended are the ones that are hung up on their ownership of whatever that issue is and or mm -hmm. the most fearful or embarrassed of that issue, typically. 
Um, you know, so it's, it's all a matter of programming and, you know, the way that he comes back, like he said, that, that kind of comeback, uh, to, to really bring the, the realness out, right. Mm -hmm. And to point out that we're all, you know, I'm not the only one. I I love that. Right. Right. Makes you, you know, kind of get out of your head for just a minute and, and look at it from a different perspective. You know, I have to laugh. I mean, like Michael do so many things to just please people and, please friends and fundraisers and stuff. And we were doing this fundraiser that, that didn't have a huge budget, obviously, and needed to have a fundraiser for sure. But the, it was just typical, you know, the, the microphone was squealing and, and it was falling off its stand and there was no way to get it on there. And it was just, everything was falling apart. And Mike just took it all like the pro that he is. And he says, I'd like to think, I'd like to thank uh, whoever he thanked for for going to great lengths to produce this show. I mean, and the people who who had gone to the lengths that they know, you know, they they laugh too because it's like it is what it is. It and, is what it is, and, and that's what we don't do enough of. And I'm certainly have have in the past been a victim of this and and trying to move away from it, which is taking things too seriously and and not finding the humor in the chaos. Hmm. Hmm. Like Dr. Mike. Like Dr. Mike. <laughs> See, so we should go to Mike and say, okay, Mike, here's here's what's going on in my life. These are my problems. And he could just make jokes out of it. Yeah, and he'll get the bat. And he'll get the and bat. He'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll knock it out of you. See the funnier, or I'll get the bat. Although that's the difference between growing up in Jersey and growing up in Cleveland. We had the wiffle ball bat that we'd fill up with sand. Are you serious? Yeah. For protection? <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. You're kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's a wiffle ball? Is that... What's a wiffle ball? Is is it the bat with the holes in it? It's the, the plastic hole, bat with the, the ball hole. with the holes in it. The plastic yeah. bat, but the ball, the wiffle ball was mm-hmm. a softball shaped plastic ball with holes in it. Okay. Like a Swiss cheese ball. Right. right. Okay. So it wouldn't go quite as far as... And no policeman would ask and you... And it would sound you. like it was whiffing, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose, whiffing. if you hit it real hard. Although I think somebody just... It was a typo, because it was really called a waffle ball. A waffle ball. And no policeman, if you had that in the front of your seat or your car, no policeman would stop you and ask you why you had that. And if they did, they would probably just laugh at you and move along. <laughs> So, you know, that's that's actually a really fine example is uh, when he's talking about something really serious, um, you know, having a bat for protection and then making this whole joke about that, that we can laugh. And I'm sure there are people that still have, you know, did you touch my car? Did you touch my car? Vinny, get the bat. I could just see it. I mean, just just here and break the window and like, see, no, I touch your car. I just touched your car. You know, you read about that stuff in the papers daily. Right. People are so attached to their thing, uh, you know, their shoes or their, you know, people getting killed over the strangest items. Right. And uh, and, and that's what's what's what we need to learn and what we needed to, to disconnect from. And that's what he's so good at. And, and comedians like that, to be being able to take that that reality of life and that kind of over over zealous commitment to things and and shine a light on it and 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 make you laugh at it yeah and actually actually ironically you know when we talked about at the beginning of the show what would flippo say actually i i took a page out of mike's book uh without even knowing it but i i made funny this young lady ended up dropping me off to the airport afterwards and i made fun of the situation you know uh, and, and to try to bring light to it but also to say, boy, you're the crazy one, aren't you? And she laughed and she says, yeah, they call me that. They say I'm the crazy one. I guess every family's got a crazy one. You know, and it's like, you know, <laughs> let's talk about this some more, shall we? <laughs> you know, because let's shed some light. Let's laugh. Let's ease the tension. Maybe the next time somebody touches her car, she could remember that that's a little crazy, don't you think? <laughs> that's just a little crazy. But everybody's got a little crazy in them because, you know, I know I'm scared to death to go out there and touch your luggage. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. We're not going there. There's a luggage story that we'll have to share another time. But <laughs> not to say that you still have any baggage. <laughs> no. But um, but. Oh, we had the communion on earlier. <laughs> Little did I know. Actually, um, you know, I, I, I've gone to see Mike do stand up. 
And the thing that, you know, as a performer myself, winning an audience, you know, of strangers, like going to New York this time was an audience where I knew absolutely nobody. Uh, and it's interesting, actually, come to think of it, this ties in um, that, you know, like like Mike does, he, he wins his audience over fairly quickly, even if people don't know him because he's got that he's real and he'll talk about whatever. And it's like gives people a feeling like they're, you know, they're in good hands or this guy's cool or this guy's real or whatever. And obviously funny. Um there was a, I have to tell you this, though I won't talk about the, the, the contest and all just yet, a young lady behind the, behind the stage who was also competing said, do you have any family out there? And I said, no. Uh, or, or no, no, she said, is there anybody out there that's uh, rooting for you or cheering for you in the audience? And I didn't know a soul in the audience. And I said, yes. And she said, who? I said, everybody. And her eyes opened up real big, and she said, "Oh my God, that's a." She's also from. The show. <laughs> she was. <laughs> oh my God, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> and, I, and I left it at that because I thought, "Wow, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. It is. It's a good answer." And what if we all felt like that? Like no matter where we went, that everybody was there cheering for you. That's the way we should approach every minute of the day. Right, most of the life, uh, the, the struggles that we seem to face are from our own hesitations, our own lack of confidence, our own second guessing, and that usually stems from something that we've been through in the past, or watching somebody else, you know, get fail or get embarrassed or any of that kind of stuff, and and you get away from that the type of confidence of knowing everybody's out there rooting for you. Mm. And Mike has experience audience after audience after audience you know him winning them over and them laughing and and enjoying them and liking him and obviously i had that experience with the music too but i never quite made that connection to actually go out and say i know we're all here for the same reason mm. uh, you know because i'm here and i'm singing sure but they want me to succeed because they want to be entertained and I want to succeed because I want them to be entertained. And and it's a it's a win win. So wow. wow. That is a win win. Well, it's a win win because you're also sincere in your desire to entertain and to to to, to, to succeed. True. Yeah, you know, there's so much of modern day entertainment that's boxed and sold. Hmm. And that's you know, that's, uh, I think, what's special about you and special about Dr. Mike <laughs> and so many others that we've been a a blessed to come to know and talk to on this show is that there's a sincerity and the desire to entertain, the desire to impart knowledge, the desire yeah. to teach, all of those things. Desire to help. Absolutely. And that makes all the difference in the world, no I'm matter just, what kind of bat you're carrying. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to start calling him the New Jersey good boy. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he'd probably get the bat on that. The, hopefully, the woofle bat. Um, but but I just said something that I think we're going to coin, and that's it's a wow wow situation. A, a wow wow situation. a wow wow situation. That works. We'll have to think about yeah, that. We'll have to think about that, and we'll have to talk about that another time because we are at the end of another great, exciting show. And and by the way, Mike, Mark, Mike, and Mark. And everybody listening, happy Chinese New Year. Happy Chinese New Year. <laughs> Year of the Dragon, New Moon, and all that. The good Water stuff. Dragon. The Water Dragon. Not just any old dragon. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> this is 2012, you know. 2012 and the Year of the Water Dragon and the end of another great show. I, it's been a pleasure being of service by hosting Life Changes with Filippo today. I, Filippo, along with uh, our producers, Dorothy Lee Donahue and Mark Lejour, and our engineer, Seth Hendricks. Thank you for being part of this world and part of this show and part of the, part of the, part of the Happy New Year. <laughs> Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. 
Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Change